everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video we are doing a repotting party. So I've recently done two um, special orchid hauls which I've done on a premiere stream so that we can chat while I unbox them. And I'm now repotting all of them basically in one day. So I've got everything I need here. I've got loads of pots and things like at the end, I've got all my media mix uh, um, various medias in here, lava rock here, a big bucket of leka just soaking at the end. Um, so I'm just going to repot them with you guys and chat about each repot and I thought that that would maybe be useful um, because people have requested that I do longer repot videos before when I've kind of just repotted one and then skipped through the rest. So I thought I would um, do a long video where I do everything and talk about my reasoning, my methods and what I'll do is I will put chapters in the video because there's a new YouTube feature. You may have noticed lots of videos doing it now where you can put chapters in the video um, by putting timestamps in the description. And that way you can just drag the um, this thing, the bar along the timeline of the video and it'll skip you to different chapters. So if you just wanna see one orchid repot or something, then you can kind of go along and navigate that way. So hopefully that, um, lessens the impact of having a huge video because I completely appreciate that people don't always want to watch long videos and I appreciate all, that everyone's got busy lives, you don't necessarily want to um, watch all of it or have time to watch all of it and completely appreciate that. I appreciate any video that you click on honestly and I don't expect people to watch my videos so um, the options there, you can just scroll along uh, if you're getting bored, you can scroll to the next bit, that sort of thing. So, uh, with that said, let's get repotting. And the first lot of orchids that we're going to be repotting are the orchids from my um, haul from Salon Orchid Day in Poland, which is the first unboxing I did for the unicorns. Um, turns out, so they haven't replied to me yet still, we're on um, three days after the unboxing, I emailed them straight away about the Phalaenopsis violacea crossed with Rhynchostylus gigantea. Um, we're going to lose a leaf. It's this one. It's going to go. Uh, this is like due to a fungal thing at the bottom of the leaf. Can you see? But that has all dried out now, apart from the fact that I've just been soaking this. And I managed to clean out the crown. I think it might be intact, but I'm not gonna email them again. I'm just gonna leave it because I was very upset. It looked like it was insect damage. I pulled out a few dead mealy bugs. So there'd been a nest in the crown. Um, lots of damage, but I don't think the growth point is damaged. So I think we'll be okay. It's gonna lose this leaf. Not too happy about that, but I think it will make it. And what I'm gonna do is just leave it to um, drop this leaf of its own accord, which it is gonna bottom it's going to drop it but what it can do is reabsorb those nutrients from that leaf in the process of dropping it um doesn't look like i've had a little peek under the leaf there's no infection spreading or anything i think it is just it's going to drop it it's fine it's not fine but i think we can save this orchid it's going to be a struggle though so i am going to pot it up because it does have roots not great roots but i'm just going to leave it it's got this thing at the bottom of one of them. Show you. It's there. So I'm not sure if that's the start of a root or the start of a keiki. Um, lots of blackened root tips, but it probably needed a lot more moisture than it was getting, just by how dehydrated it was when I got it. I think yeah i think it's savable but it's not ideal so um i'm gonna pop that up my uh tolumnia triketa soaking away on its little mount uh, it has some new growths and i'm just gonna what i've been doing uh, it's been three days since the unboxing and for those three days i have just been for these three keeping them bare root and just soaking them two to three times a day for several hours, then letting them dry overnight by a heater. They've been by a heater this whole time, so nice and warm. And I don't know if you remember, but I commented that the Vandopsis perici crossed with Van Denisoniana was looking super dehydrated in the video. And it's like plumped up so much. I don't know if you can tell from this. I'll try and put a picture up of when I unboxed it, but it's like 
it's really plumped. It was so wrinkled and floppy before. So um, they're all just soaking. It's also reactivated a root tip. It was so dehydrated, I don't think it's suited to mounting at all. It wasn't attached to the mount, I think it just been stuck from a pot onto the mount. Um, it's got loads of blackened root tips along to the root growth. Ooh, can I get that? This is why I prefer filming the orchids. I'm gonna duck out and see if it'll. There you go, I think that's focusing better. Anyway, it's got loads of blackened root tips along like where it's tried to branch. This root is also reactivating its tip. So, um, as is this one. And that's since soaking, it like, it, it's really enjoyed these long soaks, then drying out and long soaks. I think it likes a lot of moisture. So, um, I'm gonna get started on that repot. And while I'm doing that, my orchids from today's order, which is the French eBay seller, Olivia 46, um, they are soaking away. So by the end of the day, I will repot those. I'm just gonna give them as long as possible soaking away in their nutrient solutions. I need to get this all done today because I need to water today and then leave. Um, back at work so juggling between houses and um, orchids and stuff so uh, let's just get on with the repot so I'm really hoping that you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here this is my little repotting tray I've got a bin lined with a compostable bin liner already for me to put the bark and things in um, I've got media buckets sort of off to the side loads of different medias and I've got pots so we are ready to get started so first, we are going to take my Rhynchostylis gigantea, crossed with Phalaenopsis violacea, and it's going to go into this pot. Um, pot size doesn't matter so much with inorganic media because there's lots of airflow. I want to give this plenty of room to make sure it's not dehydrating. It's going to go into this pot. Uh, I could put it in something smaller, but then we're going to have a much smaller reservoir, so I am going to put it into this one. Um, so, I'm just going to put a wick in. These are cut up microfiber cloths. Uh, I'm out of my usual wicks, but these work just fine. You can use uh, any wicking fabric for a wick. It doesn't have to be special wicks or anything. So... That's going to be touching the bottom of the reservoir, that's fine. So it's going to be quite a large wick in here because I want it to have moisture. Um, because it's, we can you know, baby this one along a little bit because of the state it's in. So I don't want it to have a dry top layer at all. So um, we are going to put this into a mix of Lekka and Lava Rock with maybe a little bit of large grade ceramics in there. So first of all, I'm just going to start off by filling the bottom third of the pot with lecker and pulling the wick up as I do so. So I've just filled the bottom half of the pot up with lecker and I'm just going to gently squeeze the pot and adjust the orchid in the pot so that its roots are just a little bit in the lecker. That way you can adjust the positioning of the orchid and make sure that the lecker is starting to surround the roots rather than leaving any gaps. And then I'm just going to fill around with a mixture of lecker and lava rock around the roots that this orchid does have. And I just want to include the lava rock to try and hold on to a little bit more moisture around the top layer. So I positioned it how I want it, and I think I am gonna just leave it like this and not put a pebble top layer on and just see how it does. Because um, I really wanna be able to monitor around this base of the stem. I might pull this leaf off because I've kind of wiggled it while I've been repotting and I think it's about to go. I was gonna leave it to reabsorb as much of the nutrients as possible, but I kind of think I wanna take it off. So I'm just gonna very carefully do that. it's like done around the base anyway. I don't want any moisture trapped in around there if it's rotting. Oh, poor little thing. It's like coming straight off. It was about to go, I think. Don't want to take any of those new root tips with me though, because they can reactivate. Okay, so that was, that just came straight off. It's like, It's a shame. Um, just 
just going to take all the dead material I can away from the stem here. And that's what we've got. Um, I think there is some hope at the base here. It's got roots in the pot. We'll just have to see what it does um, at this point. I have contacted them. I really, really hope that they pull a replacement out of this stock somewhere but I don't think it's likely. So that is the Phalaenopsis of Violetia Magenta crossed with Rhynchostylus Gigantea Pink. Single leaf with roots all repotted. Let's hope for the best, hey? Such a shame. Can you give this loads of seaweed and hope that it makes a cakey for me if there is crown damage, although I think that we are okay in the crown there. And this leaf was yellowing from the base up, which indicates that this drying or rot, whatever it was, um, was like, if a leaf is being reabsorbed by the orchid, it tends to yellow from the tip down rather than from the base up. So, yeah. Not great, but... Keep it in your thoughts. Let's hope for the best. So that one's all done. Just gonna clean up and then we'll move on to the next one. Next, we are going to repot my Vanda Denisoniana crossed with Vandopsis Parishi. I'm really pleased with how this one has responded to treatment, shall we say. Doing really well. I have got seaweed all over the leaves where I've kind of dunked it a few times, but that root tip is very rewarding. So we are going to do the same again, put a wick in, and then we are going to start layering the media. My Vandopsis Parishi hybrid. And Vandopsis. Oh, I've also got Lysocaloides, and that one also does extremely well in uh, semi hydroponic or self watering setups. I have two of them, uh, different colour forms. So I'm thinking that this one should do fine as well. So, again, I'm going to layer some lecker in there first. I'll just take it out of his mask so you guys can see better. And this pot has got loads of ventilation holes in, which up until recently I didn't really think were necessary. Um, I just happen to be reusing pots with them in, but I think my vanders and hybrids respond really well to having extra ventilation, so I think it does depend on the type of orchid. So bottom half is lacquer. I'm gonna position our orchid in there. Then I'm gonna throw in some lava rock. Just scrunch the pot so it kind of goes down into the mix as well. Layer some more lacquer. 
then I'm just going to layer some more lacquer and also squeeze the pot a little bit so a little bit of that lacquer kind of um, sinks into the lava layer just to make sure that everything's contacting and mixed together well. Um, the layering is kind of so that I don't have to pre-mix individual medias for these. And then I'm going to put some lava on the top. Trying to be very careful not to scuff any root tips with the lava since it is a rough material but the rough nature of it does mean that there will be a lot more air pockets in between each media because of the kind of more jagged edges but just something to be aware of with root tips. And then I just like to manually kind of settle the top layer, direct it away the, from the base of the plant and away from any root tips so that roots can kind of grow down into it which will give you the best adaptation for each root and I'm gonna leave it like that it's been mounted so it's in an awkward position the crown is like tilted downwards and that should rectify itself as it starts to grow upwards towards the light I'm gonna leave a top layer of lava up there let's see how moist that stays um, I'm still working with lava rock I'm not totally sure about it but it, it seems to give a really positive response so seems to hold a bit more well quite a lot more water than lecker so let's see how well it keeps the top layer moist shall we and now I'll just tip its seaweed and nutrient mix back into the pot but I will also flush that pot through and re-top up with nutrients once we're all done but just to make sure it's getting a bit extra while I'm doing all this repotting so that is the Vandopsis Parishi crossed with Vanda Denisoniana Orange, all repotted. Next, we're going to work on little Mr. Tolumnia here. So let's get you in a bit closer so you can see better. So this, this is the Tolumnia Triketra. And I've been giving this soaks um, to try and help it get some nutrients into it. It does have a new growth just here. So I'm going to take it off this mount and pot it into a cute little pot with some lava rock. First I'm just cutting the elastic that's holding it onto the mount and then I'm just going to gently kind of pinch my fingers around each root and see if it will separate or whether I need to cut into the cork bark at all. Um, cork is very soft so you can just kind of flake the actual cork away with your fingers, there's no need to um, break any roots, it's just a very time consuming process. So I'm kind of just like digging the roots out. Some of them are stuck under that staple, so I'm just going to try and lift the staple. This cork is pretty rotten, so just came straight out and stabbed myself a little bit. Don't do that bit. I'm just going to try and break this corner of cork off. cork I just kind of try and break it apart and find the weak points because the roots will have tunneled through and made little weak points that will break off easily. That's the theory anyway. I would suggest you don't ever try and unmount things while angry because it's uh, it's going to be frustrating so it's one of those things you just have to, it's a root tip there take your time with, I've broken that, to try and get the roots out intact.
Now that I've got the main plant off the mount, I've got a few chunks of cork that are still left on. So I'm just going to try and break them apart and tease them away from the roots very gently. But I'm also not going to worry too much if I can't get them off at this point. I've just accidentally broken a couple of the older leaves off, which I'm a little bit gutted about, but luckily all of the new growth side is fine and I've been very careful about that, but I think I was holding it by an old leaf that's broken. So these roots are well and truly wrapped around these little bits of cork that are remaining, so I'm just gonna leave well alone. Um, lost a few little roots, but... And a couple of the older leaves from the older growths here, which is really sad, but luckily all of the new growths are okay. And it left its pot at home, actually. I decided to take the tilamnia back home with me and potted up into the pot that I'd already prepared for it, which was a little bonsai pot. Uh, I just took a few photos of it back home. It's in a mix of lava rock and large grade ceramics in a clay, very shallow bonzo pot, so it should dry very quickly. So I'm gonna go for something a little bit less fiddly and do the Cattleya, which is Cattleya walkeriana crossed with Leopoldii crossed with Peckhaviensis. So huge Cattleya type there. So I'm just gonna, it's been soaking for a few hours. I'm just gonna squeeze the pot. And I will be keeping this pot. This is a size I use frequently. Okay, um, so basically I'm just gonna do this over the bin. Just get through it and like loosen up this massive root system here. So when repotting Cattleya orchids, it's very important to just be very gentle when teasing bark off the roots. It's important to pre-soak, preferably for a few hours before actually starting the repot so the roots are all nice and flexible and the bark is kind of soft and expanded and just gently teasing it off because any damage to the velumen, any bits of velumen that come off, can increase the chance that the orchid will dump that root. Cattleyas, in my experience, um, do this very easily, that they will uh, kill off a root following a repot. So I think it's just very important to be as gentle as possible and to time the repot with when there's active growth so that if this does happen, the new roots are ready to take over from the old root system. Now there are lots of little white fuzzy things in this media that I'm hoping are mold but potentially could be a mealybug nest. I have a feeling it's mealybug nests. So. Huh. Yeah, it's just looking bug like to me rather than mold. So, this one might be staying bare root for a while because the nests are all around the root system. If they are nests, that is, let's hope that it's mold. So I'm just going to continue really gently teasing the bark off the roots. The bark is relatively soft, although it is quite a good quality bark, so it's retained a lot of that firmness, but it is just kind of pinching off the roots without causing any damage really, or too much damage. So that's quite fortunate. Sometimes it can be really stuck on and be quite difficult to get off. And in that case, sometimes you need to get a fingernail in between the root and the bark. Found some more white stuff on that one. So gonna get all the bark off and then have a better look at the plant itself and see if there's any more any sign of mealy bugs or nests so dead uh, old pseudobob there so I'm just gonna take that off Cattleya roots will often die off after a repot, um, but we have new growths here, which are kind of, this one has produced a few new roots. Uh, this one's produced a few, I think they're probably capable of more. Uh, oh, that's just fallen off, but it's 
like pretty rotten at the base there. was pretty rotten as well so I've just taken that off because it had loads of fur on the underside whether or not that's mealy bugs or mold I think it is mo I, I really can't tell obviously you can tell they're live mealy bug but their nests also look moldy and cottony so sometimes it's a bit tough to tell um I think this is mold though I'm leaning towards mold now after finding that because the actual bulb was quite rotten as well And I'm thinking we might actually have two plants here. That is a snail. Snails don't really have the impact on cattleya roots that um, they do on oncidium roots. So I very rarely get problems with snails with cattleyas and they don't tend to munch on the roots. It's probably been um, munching on something else in the media because I've not seen any much root tips at all. And I don't think I have ever seen with cattleyas snail damage. We no, we're not two plants, we are one plant branching in two directions of growth with a rotted rhizome, which has just fallen off. So now we are two plants. So that rhizome there that was holding the two bits together has rotted. Just deal with one half at a time now at least, I guess. It's a shame, but that had already happened, nothing I can do about that. Just going to need to clean it up and tidy it up a bit before repotting. I'm just going to carry on removing the bark and skip to the end bit where I've removed the bark of this repot because for me I do really like to take my time and take each bit of bark off each root really carefully so that I don't damage the velumen. The biggest spider just came out of it. I don't know where it went. Yeah, it's in there. Okay, another advantage of doing it over a bucket. I obviously disturbed him. Loads of really old gross bits at the back here. Just gonna take that off. I'm not even gonna try propagating from that. Like, they're done. Right, so I think I've pretty much got all the organic media out of the centre of the plant. I'm just going to put this back in its pot to soak while I work on the other half of this plant. So that's the second half that we have. And they are getting potted up together. There's not that much left, so I think it's kind of time to get cutting on this part. I have some quite old bits here now. Oh, I don't, can't really tell if it's mold or mealy bug nests, honestly. Like it looks weird for mold. I'm gonna go and wash it off under the tap and spray it down with hydrogen peroxide. And if I find any sign of live mealy bugs in here, it is getting some alcohol as well. So I'm going to do that. So I think it was mealybug nests, but I can't find any live mealybugs. So I'm just going to have to isolate this plant and just keep an eye on it. Um, got rid of the offending fuzzy areas. So now I'm going to trim away what I believe are all the dead roots. So anything firm can stay and anything squishy is going to go. And it's literally just a case of going along and feeling each root. OK, 
because cat theories often don't survive the transition to semi-hydro in my experience. Um, kind of depends. But... I'll take off anything dead to just limit the amount of organic matter there is in there that could decompose. And if it is firm up until a point and then squishy halfway down the root, just cut the end of it that's squishy. Don't cut into the firm tissue because you're then creating an open wound on the plant. And anytime you do do that and cut into fresh healthy tissue, you need to sterilise your tools between each cut. Um, whereas if it's already dead tissue, the plant has already kind of taken care of sealing off its uh, supply of sap or um, nutrients flow to that area so it's not going to as easily transmit. That's not very good looking root system there but downstream of it we have live roots so that will be absolutely fine to leave on because that could still continue growing or branch depends on the type of cattleya. Some will, some won't. And likewise these are all looking terrible but they're firm so I'm going to leave them on because they can just be stained by the tannins in bark. Some types of media will stain the roots. So I think we're just going to leave everything that's on there now. So that's the root system that we're left with. I'm just going to start on the other plant now. So I'm just going to go rinse it off at the sink again. So if I try and um, take off this bark, it's very, very firmly attached. And this is the only previously grown tip on there. I don't want to just wreck the volumen because cattleya roots, if you damage them too much, they will die. So I'm just very gently going to try, but I'm not going to force the issue if they don't want to come off. Okay, so they're off. Now I'm going to just take off any old, not so good looking roots. Sometimes even if the velumen is dead and clearly dead, you can see that the inner root is still alive. Um, the inner root can sometimes be a pale greener colour and that indicates that it's still alive where the velumen was dead, um, which is kind of annoying when you cut that and then find that it was actually alive. But the velumen is really the only external indicator that we have to go by at this point. So for example, this root here, I believe that that inner root is actually still alive. There's a firm, very thick, whitish um, inner root to this, but all of the external volume is dead. So if this plant didn't have many roots, I would leave this root on because it's likely still absorbing some water, even though the volume, which is the sponge that sucks the water up to deliver to the inner root is dead. However, it's got lots of roots and this root will never branch because it requires Valiumin to be alive to be able to initiate a new root tip from it. So I am going to cut this because it's just going to add to the decomposing stuff in the pot otherwise. Okay, so I've just left on what is firm and alive and taken off everything that was squishy and potentially dead. Um, because if I was in doubt and there weren't many roots on this plant, then I would leave it alone. But because there's plenty, I took off some that were just older and looking like they were on their way out as well. Just a clear way for new roots to come in. And now we're going to grab the pot that we're going to use for this one. So this is going to be going into a 15 centimeter pot. I've just put both bits in and they fit nicely and it still allows room for probably the rest of this year's growth because we're probably only going to get one more growth each this year and then I can always repot at a later date so I'm just going to pretty much keep this in pure lacquer maybe a little bit of lava rock pumice mixed in um, cat layers do very well in that mix for me um, so I'm literally just going to fill the pot up with lacquer So I'm arranging the um, smallest, oldest growths towards the centre of the pot and then the biggest outer growths um, into the sort of edge of the pot and trying to just give it room if it does make another growth, that growth will still be producing roots into the pot. So I think I'm going to position it like that. Um, should be okay for this year. That will need a repot uh, beginning of next year though. And then just fill the rest around with lacquer. That was not an easy repot. This guy is a climber. So uh, I've done the best I can. 
needs a bigger pot. Might have to repot him fairly soon, but for now, I'm kind of at an it'll do stage, even though this is driving me nuts. It would be better to pot them up separately. So is that repot done? So I'm done for today, I'm giving up. I'm going to, I've repotted uh, three orchids, the Cattleya and these two. And I'm just gonna leave the rest of the orchids soaking overnight. It's nice and warm, so that won't be a problem. Um, just need to go and urgently water the rest of my orchids before tomorrow. So these ones can wait until tomorrow. I've taken all the moss out of the, uh, the Phalaenopsis. So just quickly unpotted them and just took all the moss out of the root ball. So they're all just soaking bare root in nutrients. The rest of them will be fine. This way they can drink as much as they like. And I will come back and sort the rest of them tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching my four repots today. I missed out the Tolumnia. And I hope that you enjoyed this and that it was made easier by having the chapters if you weren't wanting to see the full video. Let me know what you think down below. I know lots of people like longer repot videos and lots of people want shorter snappy ones. So hope that I'm catering to both um, overall with this. But thank you so much for watching anyway. And I will see you guys all later for the next repot session. Bye.